Thank you, Brother Francis Atwoli. Your Excellency, Dr. William Ruto, the President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces, Your Excellency, Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Honorable Judges present, Cabinet Secretaries, colleagues present, Honorable Johnson Sakaja, the Governor of Nairobi County, Principal Secretaries present, the Chairman and Executive Board members of KOTU, Brother Francis Atwoli, the Secretary General KOTU Kenya, Sister Jacqueline Mugo, the Executive Director FKE, Chairs of Committees of Parliament and Members of Parliament present, Ambassadors and High Commissioners present, all distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Ham Jambo. It is an honor to mark the 59th International Labor Day in the company of esteemed workers gathered here at Uhuru Gardens, Nairobi. I wish to express my sincere gratitude to you, Your Excellency, Dr. William Ruto, the President of the Republic of Kenya, for honoring our invitation once again to celebrate with workers on this special day. This is a testament of Your Excellency's commitment to the welfare of workers. We deeply appreciate this great gesture. Today, we join hands with millions around the world to observe the International Labor Day, a day in which trade unions celebrate workers and the fruits of their labor. The theme of this year's celebration, Kenya's workers stand for advanced information technology, training to drive our digital economy. It aligns seamlessly with the bottom-up economic transformation agenda 2023 to 2027, as it underscores the need for readiness to adapt to the changing world of work brought about by digitalization. The emergency of the gig economy signifies a profound shift in employment dynamics across the world as countries embrace rapid digitalization of economic activities in e-commerce and employment. The demand for labor in the digital economy necessitates the need to devise new strategies in governance and policy framework for fair distribution of gains and opportunities. The new jobs in the digital and gig economy come with limitations on how work is organized and regulated with workers having limited job security, restricted access to social protection, career progression, and the lack in the right to organize collectively. Conscious of these challenges, we note that constructive dialogue drawing the tripartite and other stakeholders is crucial to ensure decent work for all. We now have a community of practice and my ministry is collaborating with stakeholders to review labor laws in this regard. Your Excellency, my ministry has put in place additional measures to ensure skills development is responsive to the labor market demand. Our government launched the National Skills Inventory to map out the skills of all Kenyans seeking employment to enhance employability locally and abroad. In the pursuit to address the high unemployment rate, government has continued to engage with other governments who have a high demand for labor through initiating negotiation of bilateral labor agreements or memorandum of understanding to provide safe and orderly labor migration. We have retained foreign employment on top of our agenda, and so far, we have pursued and signed four bilateral labor agreements, and seven are at, are at an advanced stage of negotiation, while 14 are in draft form. The aim is not only to provide overseas opportunities, but also to encourage the return of skilled workers with enhanced capabilities. Encouragingly, there are 254,312 
active jobs that have been advertised by the private recruitment agencies on the National Employment Authority website at www.niaims.go.ke. Job seekers are encouraged to register through the website and apply for the jobs. Your Excellency, in our quest to foster workplace harmony and acceptable conditions of work, the Labor Inspectorate has diligently processed over 11,000 labor disputes and conducted more than 12,000 workplace inspections and facilitated registration of an additional 334 collective bargaining agreements in the last one year. My ministry remains steadfast in engaging social partners, and I once more call upon the healthcare workers and employers to reconsider their position for a win-win outcome. We need normalcy to be restored in the health sector to bring to an end the suffering of our people. In recalling the Daban call to action on elimination of child labor by 2025, my ministry recently joined the Alliance 8.7 on a pathfinder, as a pathfinder country and further established seven county child labor committees to address child labor issues at the county levels. These efforts underscore our unwavering dedication to uphold children's rights to social and educational development. Your Excellency, social protection is a mandate of my ministry. And we continue to implement the cash transfer programs with an increase in social assistance coverage to orphans and vulnerable children and persons living with disabilities, as well as the Inua Jamii program for the elderly persons where government has committed 28 billion. In a move to afford social security to those in the informal sector, we have intensified campaigns to promote Haba Haba program under NSSF, where members can access their savings plan through their mobile phones by dialing star 303 hash. To give members a chance to save 25 shillings a day, a minimum of 25 shillings a day, with an option of withdrawing 50% of their contribution after consistently contributing for a minimum of five years. My ministry is also developing bills to enhance the legal framework for protection of labor, which include the Labor Migration Management Bill, the Social Protection Bill 2024, the Work Injury Compensation Act Bill, Occupational Safety and Health Bill, National Productivity and Competitiveness Council Bill, among others, which are at various stages of development. Your Excellency, on the international scene, my ministry has also made good progress towards the ratification of Convention 189 on domestic workers and Convention 190 on violence and harassment. Public participation in public fora and media platforms are ongoing to build consensus and we will soon present the country position to cabinet for way forward. I thank all stakeholders involved, including our social partners, for their submissions and guidance. Allow me, Your Excellency, to appreciate COSU, and FTE, ministry locally and internationally. As members of ILO governing body, they have effectively represented the country's interest and ensure that we have the necessary technical and financial support. In comparison to other countries in the region, Kenya has a total of 12 programs supported by ILO. As I conclude, I wish to emphasize the importance of strengthening the social dialogue institutions by increasing the funding to enhance their operations to curb the recurrent countrywide industrial actions. Finally, I wish to state that my ministry stands in solidarity with employers and workers and will guard their fundamental principles and rights at work, as well as ensure social justice for all. 
We cannot forget our brothers and sisters who have perished due to the devastating floods, those who have been rendered homeless and the ones in hospitals. Let us all stand with them in prayers as well as support them where we can. It is now my humble pleasure to welcome His Excellency Honre Borigadi Gashagwa, the Deputy President, to make his address and invite to Your Excellency, the President of Kenya. Karibu, Your Excellency. <laughs> 